Everything's gonna be alright And when we get there I'ma see a pretty, pretty, pretty young thing I'ma ask her to take my hand Head to the floor And we gon' dance And when we get there Best believe we're gonna do a two-step Ain't no drama in here so don't stress Step to the right, then side to the left Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Stephen I Show. Hope you had a great Monday. We're going to try to make it a little bit better for you right now. We're back with the latest in sports, fashion, movie reviews, and of course, the best in indie music out there. Now, tonight we have two guests, the very talented, soulful uh, Sia Smith. She has a new single, Camelot, where she shot a beautiful video for it. It's on YouTube. Check it out. Uh, she used to sing background for Whitney Houston, and she has a very impressive career, and she's here to discuss that with us. Then we welcome a 15-year-old actress, filmmaker, motivational speaker. She just wrote her first film that's going in production later this year. She joins us to talk about it. It's called I'm Ready, which uh, has the conversation, it initiates a conversation between teenagers and parents where the teenagers are letting them know they're ready to date. So we'll talk about all that and everything she has going on. And Hot Topics are breaking down everything. Talking about the coronavirus that's terrifying everyone. They don't even drink Corona beers anymore. Uh, we're talking about Life Jennings, who sparked a conversation on social media. He weighed on Eva Marcel's uh, decision to change her daughter's last name to her new husband, to her current husband's name. And he spoke against that, and it sparked a conversation. And so we'll be discussing that, given our opinion. I want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course, our official website, thestephenisshow.com. You can check us out on iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Play. Just go to our website. When we come back, the question of the day and hot topics. Right back after this. Trouble she causing the way that she rocking and shaking on too much. On in a far too matter. For the only let she fuck a cat eye. All the men and scatter. Now all been it, I want in a track line. When you tie your lap and you wear your skin test. When you rocking your too much. Bang it, I want my ready. Chamu, I won't take you. Anything you want, I give it to you. Take my knee, my money, my car, my clothes, my everything. Wobbly you not see fun, get capping. Like I said before, hungry line blocking. You leave it, another skin man will pop it. Grab it, squeeze it, with dry fish. That it time, you will be trying how to catch it. You know you're missing up, casa by for bad take. You fix it, oh five, trying how to catch it. Then you won't speak serious now till they get Pretty girl, let me take you out of dinner. I got a cheddar, forgive me, I was a sinner. Gonna be better from January down to December. Take trips, go to spots even in the winter. So sexy, gorgeous, and beautiful. Everything. 
something that we do is memorable. I'm feeling you from your head down to your toes. Don't have to speak, gonna I'm gonna show. That's the nigga they chasing, but they too passy jacking. My girl never suffer, suffer. My girl never suffer, suffer. I'm with her on the waiting, but I'm men in the setting. That's the nigga they chasing, but they too passy jacking, jacking, jacking. Anytime she walking, yeah. the boy them be watching. The boy them be watching. Anytime she walking, yeah. the boy them be jacking. The boy them be jacking. Baby girl, you temptation. Anytime you turn girl, you confusion.
What's up, everybody? This is Cy Smith, and you can get my new album, Sometimes the Rose Will Grow in Concrete, or hear it right here on The Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to The Stephen Knight Show. I want to remind you all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course, our official website, thestephennightshow.com. You can also check us out on iHeartRadio, Google Play, Apple Podcasts. Just go to our website, stephennightshow.com. Miss Parker, it is you and Janera's birthday week. You're March 4th. She's March 5th. What do you have planned? Have you started celebrating? Are you celebrate for a month? Tell us everything. Pisces season, turn up. Pisces season. <laughs> Me, you, and Janera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of Pisces. Um, I went to the cabins this past weekend. I, I'm not going to be traveling out of the country this this year because my dad is having surgery and I have to go to California next week. But, mm-hmm. um, that changed my plans a little bit, but I did celebrate with some friends in the cabin. Yeah. Really funny. It was 10. Um, we actually went to that cabin before for my 27th. 26th birthday, 27th birthday. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, yeah, I think it was, I think you may be right. It was 27. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was the exact same cabin. So it was wow. really fun. Really fun. We made some good memories. We got back yesterday. The weather was great when we got back. Here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I ran errands and got some things done but I'm going to de- my birthday is actually Wednesday so I'm going to dinner on Wednesday and then um, we have the celebration on Sunday with our other friends yeah and mm-hmm. um, and then on Saturday I think I'm going to a brunch thing like a, a brunch festival with, with Kanan and, and a couple of other friends nice uh, and I'm going to do a dinner in California while I'm there but you know it's Pisces season so every week I may have a whole <laughs> you might have a whole plan exactly <laughs> Oh, that's great. I saw the pictures and the videos from the weekend. Um, and it was like y'all had an amazing time. Let me live. Let me live and do my dance. Uh, I saw y'all doing that dance. <laughs> they were doing the challenge. I said, what has been fucking doing? But, but y'all had it. And y'all like y'all having a blast. That's all that matters. You know what I mean? That's all that matters. We had a good time. That's good. Well, I'm 35. 35. Wow. It sounds, it sounds crazy. And I, the only time I feel is when I'm working out. But mm-hmm. other than that, I, I definitely feel blessed um to be able to celebrate another year i know you and i blessing. you and i were joking about um the current president and he was saying why he doesn't work out what'd he say <laughs> he said because um everybody he knows that work out by the time they get his age they're crippled in worse shape <laughs> and he I might mean, be right <laughs> i mean he does have a point i mean in pain <laughs> <laughs> Well, happy birthday week, and um, I definitely look forward to sound with you at some point, and uh, I just hope you have a great one, and, and a wonderful 35. Thank you. Thank you. Most definitely. Thank you. Mr. Chico. Happy ha- birthday, Janelle. They had birthday, Janelle. <laughs> Her birthday is on, fi- on Thursday. Um, uh, Chico, well, how was your weekend? What did you do? Uh, my weekend was really short. Um, uh, I extended my work week. I worked. I did a little overtime on Friday. I did an overnight shift, and so it extended into Saturday. Um, the weekend was short. The weekend was good, um, just a little too short. They always go by so quick. But this you blink. Quicker. You blink and be over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> five minutes. Uh-huh. Um, I did manage to squeeze in, you know, a movie. So, yeah. Good. I, 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 was, I was working, and then I was working. Right. And I was 
I'm back on Monday. My weekend was pretty cool. Right. I helped a friend move on Friday. Shout out to Ty. Beautiful place. Um, and then Saturday. Oh, I can't wait to go check it out. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Saturday just hung out a little bit. And then yesterday I chilled all day long. I did, I did go to the gym on Saturday because I had nothing to give on Friday. I've been doing these two a days. So I've been doing it for a while, but Friday I just felt like doing nothing gym wise. So I went on Saturday, and made up for it, which I was glad I did that. But um, it was a good weekend. Back on Monday. All right. Well, our question of the day is: Would you date someone that you found out was friends with your ex? So say that you met someone, and then it later was revealed that they were friends with your ex. Would you continue to date that person, Miss Parker? So, you know, we live in Atlanta, and mm-hmm. I do know a lot of people. I know yeah. a lot of people I've been here since I was 21. Yep. Almost everybody I've dated at some point knew an, an ex. And I haven't mm-hmm. dated, I haven't had, a, I don't have a lot of exes. Right. But the ones that I do have, the two or three are well known. So I have been in that situation before, and I have met someone who knew that I dated his friend. But he said they were more associates, and he was trying to date me. I was like, I can't do that because every time I go to something and he's there, he's gonna be there. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and they're both, you know, lawyers. I'm like, I can't do that. You know, they in the same circle, um, and it just will be awkward, I think. But mm-hmm. I think a lot of guys, I know for a fact that a lot of my guys' friends don't care. Mm-hmm. They don't care. They don't care about that. Now there are certain women that they've dated that they were with this off limits to their boys. Right, right. But um but there are some women that I've seen guys in the same group date. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> so I think Atlanta because Atlanta is a it's a big small city. Yep. Everyone knows everyone, especially if you're in a social circle. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kinda of hard to date somebody who doesn't know anybody. Like, you know, it's funny because every time I start dating someone start going through their social media, I just realized, oh, this person knows this person. Uh-huh. Knows yep. That. Yep. So there may be one three removed, um, but no, I probably wouldn't knowingly right. date somebody who I know knows my ex. Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. Chica? Uh, yeah, no. It, that's a little too messy. It's just a little too much. Yeah. I, I can't deal. I can't deal. You know, it was interesting because one of my friends came up with that question and, um, and everyone was, you know, at first, no, 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 no. But then some people were saying maybe. And I think for me, maybe is the appropriate um, response for me because the thing is, you never know until you get in a situation what you're gonna do. You know what I mean? So, um, but I think I think it's very interesting. I, I would, I don't think you purposely go out to do that. But if you get in that situation, sometimes you'll know what you'll do. So it's interesting. Yeah, and I also think too. I also I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. I also think too when you're in a situation where someone is um like for example i've had situations where my ex actually was dating a friend of mine mm. and i remember her asking me about him i'm thinking myself you were actually gonna and i told her that i'm not a personal badge right ex. i have never heard that mm-hmm. but i just told her why we didn't work but i was a little taken back that they still went out Mm. Um, but then I thought about it. I was like, you know what? That's fine because that may be, he may be her blessing. Right, you right. Know, I had to remove my ego. I yeah. Had to remove the fact that mm-hmm. it was a bit off. But you never know who's meant for who. You know, I've seen situations where it didn't work out with one girl and the, her friend dated a guy and ended up marrying a guy. Yeah. That was her person. Mm-hmm. And her friend was with Avenue. So I think we have to be mindful of not taking ownership of people. You know what yeah. I mean? Like just because we date them doesn't mean that we own them mm-hmm. um some very it's, it's a it's a it takes a lot of maturity it, takes it a lot does of maturity to be that way but i think i'm in that space now to where i'm like you know what if it didn't work for me they deserve happiness as well and if they're that if they, they may be my friend's person right you know? that's true um, i'm inside i'm inside <laughs> yeah, initially <laughs> right 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly well, tweet us at home and let us know, would you date someone that you found out was friends with your ex? Stephen I show SHO. All right, so uh, hot topics. I only have a few because we have a full show today, but um, things are looking good for Bernie Sanders. Apparently, over the weekend, he had a rally, and he needed some performers, and he called on Chuck D to perform under Public Enemy's name, and Flavor Flay was not happening. Now, according to NBC News, Flav hit Bernie with a cease and desist over the weekend, 
alleging that the rally is using his image and likeliness to uh, promote uh, the event. Since Chuck D would be performing under the stage name Public Enemy, Flav's lawyer uh, want, wants to put, put pumps on the break or the performance. He said, while Chuck D is certainly free to express his political view as he sees fits, his voice alone does not speak for Public Enemy. The planned performance will only be Chuck D of Public Enemy. It's not um, the performance of Public Enemy. Um, those who truly know Public Enemies, what they stand for, know what time it is. There's no Public Enemy without Flavor Flav. Flav added a personal touch to the bottom of the letter saying, hey Bernie, don't do this. Withdrawing one of the icon, one of his uh, clocks, you know the clocks he wears on his neck. Um, now Flav did leave Public Enemy back in 2009, leaving Chuck D as the only standing member of the group. Nevertheless, Flav wants um, no parts of being used to promote Bernie's rally. Now Chuck uh, went took to Twitter, and he pretty much said that the reason why Flavor Flav is really mad is because there's no payment being associated. He's doing it for free, but he said that if there was money, Flav would be all for it. What are your thoughts? Who's right? Who's wrong? I don't think there's a right or wrong, but I do think that when you have a group name that mm-hmm. represents a member of the group, you say Chuck D up public enemy. You don't say public enemy. Is yeah. yeah. I think group, you don't represent everybody in the group. And especially when it comes to political views, it's really important that everybody is representing themselves as to who they view is the right candidate because that's a personal thing. Yeah. I don't think that's a group thing or a money thing. Or He may be right if they were getting paid, but then Flavor Flay will be able to say, you know what, I did that for the money. He can mm-hmm. have a reason for, for, for supporting him. But I think when it comes to who you put your support behind as a public figure, it's a, it's a very personal thing. So I think as far as him going out there representing the entire group, I think it's just common sense to just say Chuck D a public enemy. I don't think y'all would yeah, be big I agree. Just rephrase it. Um, but he said he said uh, they didn't kick uh, him out of the group. Kick mm-hmm. uh, Flavor Flav out of the group. Yeah, they kicked him. Yeah, they said that they we thank you for your thirty years of service. <laughs> it's a service. <laughs> <laughs> service. Was I in the military? Was I in the group? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts, Chica? <laughs> uh, well. You, you know how militant public enemy is as a group mm-hmm. and I, Bernie knows what he's doing by wanting that name. He's trying to set an, a, an image out. He's trying to send a message. And so that message has weight to it. <clears throat> so with that message having weight connected to that name, um, slave knows this too. But like Ms. Parker said, um, Bernie has political views that everyone doesn't agree with. Right. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't know if, uh, flavor is, you know, not trying to attach himself to the viewpoint, or if he's just trying to step in between the business of Public Enemy and Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However, um, Chuck D can very much perform as Chuck D of Public Enemy. It's nothing yeah, wrong with that. I agree. That's the best solution. I think that's the best solution of Public Enemy. Uh, my my buddy. Um, I like to say my buddy because it's Dawn, uh, formerly of In Vogue. Her and Maxine, formerly of In Vogue, are going through the same thing right now. Mm-hmm. They're touring, mm-hmm. but they can't use the In Vogue name, so they have to call themselves Funky Divas. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what are your th- thoughts over the weekend and even today? Several of the uh, Democratic candidates, um, presidential candidates, they dropped out the election. Um, Pete Buttigieg, Amy Komachar, um Tom Steyer, they all dropped out after the South Carolina caucus where Joe Biden won by a landslide. Uh, do you think it is time to start dropping out, or do you think that they should have held on a little bit longer? What are your thoughts? Just like I said, when it's all the district candidates, there were 30 candidates up on stage. Mm-hmm. Nothing but wasted time and wasted money. This yeah. is all of that, all that time wasted, all that money, all that energy, all that negativity, to end up with the same two candidates that was originally supposed to be the two front runners. Mm-hmm. Nothing has changed. It was always supposed to be Joe Biden and, and Bernie Sanders if, if they both decide to run again. Yeah. We end up with the same exact people that would have been in the beginning without beating each other down. And that's why I was saying. They got on stage, tore each other apart before the Republicans can even get to them when they could have all come together, pulled those resources together, supported one or two people, and 
and the whole I think the whole energy towards the the, the election would have been different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chicky, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> so everybody has their own issues and it was exactly what Barack Obama said it was gonna be, a circular firing squad, which was advised not to do that. They did it anyway. The only way that we're going to be able to beat Donald Trump at the polls is if all Democrats rally together and stand behind one candidate. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. Yeah. So they're going to duke it out between the two. Because we all knew eventually that they were going to cipher off sooner or later. Exactly, yeah. yeah. More, more sooner than later. But I, I want people to really understand that when it comes down to these issues, the issues are going to be the issues, and you can pick whoever you want according to the issues, but if your main issue is getting Donald Trump out of office, which I think is most imperative, then you need to rally behind one person. Everyone needs to get behind one person because they're going to need the numbers. It's not going to behoove any of us to split the vote, which I thought was stupid from the beginning. Yeah. If the goal is to get Donald Trump out of office. So, yeah, I thought it was a waste of time and a waste of money when they couldn't have been putting their efforts toward one person. Yeah, yeah. Right now the top uh, three are Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and Elizabeth Warren. Um, but Elizabeth Warren is way behind them. <clears throat> um Bernie Sanders has 60 delegates and Joe Biden has 54. There was thinking that I was watching the view this morning. They said that they think that um, it'd be interesting to see who Pete uh, Buttigieg, who he endorses because they think he, they could be setting him up for a position in one of the cabinets, you know, like if he, if he endorses um, Joe Biden or whatnot. Um, I, I just have to say this because we have the airwaves to say it. Mm -hmm. My dream ticket would be Biden and Kamala Harris as vice. That's my dream. That's the thing. They're thinking Kamala Harris or um, Stacey Abrams. They're thinking that he might pick uh, either one of those, one of those women. But we'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. All right. So um, we all know this coronavirus. It's it's you know it's now in California. I think they said there was the first incident incident in, uh, first victim in New York. Um, they haven't passed away, but they caught it. Um, well, it has a lot of people, you know, feeling some kind of way, scared and and uh, and um, you know, afraid of, of of catching it, obviously. So so to the point that Corona beer, people are scared to buy Corona beer, thinking they're going to get the deadly virus. Now, according to Newsweek, a new poll conducted by a market research company, YouGov, revealed that people are now in full paranoia about buying or drinking Corona beer due to a rapid increase in fears of contra contracting the coronavirus. YouGov polled U.S. adults to find that both negative and positive current comments surrounding excuse me, the popular Corona beer indicated the results using what they call a buzz score. At the beginning of the year, in early January, Corona beer had a high buzz score of 75, but now it's at 51 as of late uh, February, despite the fact there's absolutely no connection between Corona beer and coronavirus. Do you think people are too paranoid or do you, do you think rightfully so they should, you know, dot the I's, cross the T's? What are your thoughts, Ms. Parker? I'm so over it. I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Mm -hmm. I think that every couple of years, there is an agenda to scare people that is feeding or that has a link to another agenda. I think that this is bigger than what we think. I think people are just so, um, I think we're almost like, like we're, I think for the people who run the universe and run the world, we are like little pawns in their game, right? Mm -hmm. Whenever they play games, they just throw something out there and everybody's just like, oh, eat it up. No one is like consciously thinking like, well, this is all me. If you put numbers, I just want to know what happened to the 10 people that died last week of flu. Of flu. Mm -hmm. Why is that not more fearful than the one person that had it in New York? Right. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It just doesn't make conscious common sense to me. So it's really draining to like, see how people are reacting. After I got off of work, I left work and got over here around 3.15, 3.30, and I stopped at this week that I shop at. 
Um, and I was in there shopping, and the girl who worked there, a black girl, she looked very conscious, very, you know, dressed, and, like, she, you know, practices yoga. And all that. So usually those people are usually not, don't buy into the scare tactic. Mm-hmm. She comes running up the back. Guess what? Guess what? I just saw my phone. Somebody's been diagnosed with corona in Atlanta, in Georgia. Let's make sure we wipe my hands. Let's wipe everything down. It's like, what? She ran up to myself and, and on another customer was in the store. I, I was just like, and that's not even oh, true. Damn. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, not, it, it's not true. And it's, and I think what it does is whatever you, whatever you put your attention to, I think somehow it reflects the level on which you operate. Mm-hmm. I just think that people, I don't understand how people with common sense can be that, that fearful and not see the, the full picture to where they won't drink a beer. So you won't drink a beer, but your wife have a full head of weed from China. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Yep, yep. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's, it's very frustrating for me. I try to not even engage in conversations about it. Mm-hmm. Um, because everywhere you go to the store, just lady at work is saying how it hurts. Everyone knows someone who works at CDC, CDC, though. The girl at the store was saying that her friend works at CDC, and the CDC said that this going to be the deadliest, deadliest, deadliest virus that ever hit the U.S. Was... And that I got to work, this was on Sunday, yesterday. I got to work. The lady that worked with me, her friend knows someone who trains with a director at CDC. <laughs> he said, I'm like, I can't. <laughs> wow. It's, wow. It's all ridiculous. It's all ridiculous to me. Chica, you work in the medical field. What are your thoughts? So, it's how it should be is that we should be able to trust whatever comes from the CDC. Mm-hmm. But this, this administration has fixed it so that whatever information happens has to be filtered through. Yep. Yep. I guess allegedly Mike Pence. Mm-hmm. Now, in the history of this administration, they're known for not telling the truth yep. from basically day one of, of the administration. They don't tell the truth. So why would we trust any information coming from that source? So if we can't get this, the information from a credible source, which is like CDC or scientists, why would we trust you? Yep. And because we can't get that direct information, it's leaving people to speculate. And then it's, we're getting all these false narratives about what's going on with this disease. It's creating bedlam. Yeah. It's creating bedlam. And people are going to assume, they're going to pa- get paranoid, they're going to panic. And then we get all these false stories about what's going on. Um, there needs to be some kind of order to it. I don't know how that's going to happen. But I do think that people need to be cautious, period. Right. Just in general. Mm-hmm. Virus or no virus, you just need to be, need to be cautious. Yeah. Because um, it is my belief that at certain points in time, due to population control, they do things in order to control the population. Yeah, like yeah. leak out things. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it just behooves everyone just to be more cautious about your health. Yeah, I remember I was at the gym a couple weeks ago and I saw this guy walk around with a mask on. I see him every morning. and He never wears a mask. He had a mask for two days. I guess someone told him to cut the drama because he stopped wearing it. But um, they said the mask is only. Hmm. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I, I, I want to say something about the mask. Yeah, they said the so mask is for people the... who are sick and not and not putting those right. germs right. out. Now, until, people, n- not for people wearing the mask when you're healthy. All the ones that want attention right. are doing it. That's probably what it is. Mm-hmm. The ones that want attention. Mm-hmm. So let, let, me, let me say this. The type of mask that people are wearing mostly when you see them will not protect you from incoming airborne right. threat. Right. It protects outgoing. Mm-hmm. So if, if you are trying to protect yourself, you need to wear a different type of mask. And those masks are for tuberculosis, like the TB mask. Yeah. Normally yeah. they're like cup shaped and they're green. Mm-hmm. So those masks that you buy over the counter or the basic ones that you pick up at the hospital, they're not going to do anything for you. Right, exactly. All right, well, our last story. So Eva Marcel, who um, won America's Best top model, whatever, back in the day. She's on Housewives of Atlanta. She's married to Michael Sterling, who's a politician. And um, her first child, 
is with um um what's his name Kevin what's his Kevin uh Gates is it Kevin Gates Miss Parker okay I think it's Kevin Gates Eva Mar- Eva Marcel Eva Marcel no 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 it's um uh, it's a uh... I can't remember his name, but shoot, the, yeah, um, it's not Kevin Gates. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's something, something close to that. Let me. Okay. Anyway, so I'll I'll forget his name, but um. Anyway, so her first child, Kevin McCall. Kevin McCall. McCall yeah, McCall. exactly. Yeah. So that's what her first child is with, and so he's not active in the baby's life, and her husband, um, you know, raises has raised the child. They have other children as well. I think you have three total now, including the, the first one. And so um, on the, on Housewives of Atlanta, she, they show her changing um, the baby's name to her husband's name. And um, she said it happened last year, but they're showing it now. Well, Life Jennings, remember the singer, must be nice. Him. He took to Instagram and he took a um, screenshot of when Eva and her husband were outside court reading that it's official that the name's changed. He posted a picture that he commented. He said, I think this is so whack. Changing your daughter's last name from her father's to somebody else's, especially when the father tries to see her. The daughter don't have anything to do with their beef. And what kind of man allows that? This pissed me off. I expected better out of Eva. Personal to me. I've been there. Which has sparked the conversation about... You know, should the mother be changing the last name to her husband and the one that's raising the child? Um, I was curious to get your, uh, into, you know, your um, your thoughts, Miss Parker. What do you what do you think about that? First, thing, first of all, I think he needs to mind his business. Right. And I think he is an example of how black men refuse to hold each other accountable. His, if he wanted to, if he wanted to uh, take part in this conversation and, and, and introduce himself into their business, what he should have done is. I do think that he is, um, I mean, he, he's saying the want to somehow support Kevin, which is good because everyone deserves love and everyone deserves to be supported and feel like somebody has their back. Mm-hmm. But in that still, and I posted this, I posted this before, you can still support and love your friends, dear black man, and hold them accountable for when they're not doing right. So mm-hmm. what he could was held him accountable for the things that he has done and haven't done. Like, you know, he said, well, if somebody's on drugs, they deserve... Uh, yeah, so that means that he's on drugs he's not being a good parent. Right. So you're, you're leaving the part out, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that that's a big thing in the black community. And the only, the only black man I have seen who's done this and done it on TV and publicly is uh, Remy, Remy's husband. Propose, propose, propose. Uh, Papoose, yeah. He said something to um, to um, what's Nicki Minaj ex's name? Safari. Safari, yeah. That went viral, and he told him he said, "No, it was the Joe 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 Button Joe Button Joe Button show." Yeah, his his show. Yeah, he said, and he and he checked him. He was like, "No, you if you want your woman back, you need to go get your woman back." All of the excuses and the 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 pointy fingers doesn't. It's not going to it's not going to help you with your end goal, right? Mm-hmm. If your end goal is to be a better man, you need to take accountability for the things that you've done that you haven't made you a better man. Do better and go get your woman back. I mean, I think that's how you support your friends, and I think that's how you grow as a person. Um, so yeah, and life has like six kids with five different women. So I'm, I mean, I, I mean, that's just, <laughs> he's not the subject matter expert. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> chicken. What are your thoughts? So I'm with Miss Parker. He needs to mind his business, and he may not know. I'm pretty sure he doesn't know the full extent of the right. situation. Uh-huh. So just a hypothetical, because this could be a, a situation. Um, the child is underage. The child is underage, and Eva is the person that she is. She technically can't get a passport for that child without the father's approval. To, to travel, you know, internationally, mm-hmm. and she's an international figure, so maybe she can't get that father to put a thumbs up to getting that child a passport. So a legal way to circumvent that is to make the gentleman that is acting as that child's father and taking care of that child 
the legal guardian of that child, and you can get a passport now for that child to travel with the family. That's just one scenario. I don't know what the real deal is, but sometimes what you see isn't exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And if that, if the real father is not stepping up to the plate, being active as a father, I don't see anything wrong with her um, letting her husband, who is acting as the child's father, be the legal guardian. Yeah. I don't see anything wrong with that. And Eva was on Wendy Williams, I think, on Friday, and she said that um, Kevin has no relationship with her, no relationship with the daughter, doesn't have a relationship with his own siblings, um, his own parents, and that um, he did try to sue so that the name couldn't be changed, but he went to court, if you remember this, and got in a fight with the uh, the sheriff inside the courtroom, and so the judge threw it out so he could no longer sue Eva for that. But let me tell you this quick story real quick. My sister, and I'll tell you this because my niece knows, my sister, her oldest, their oldest daughter, her and my brother-in-law, that's not biologically my brother-in-law's. My sister had it had her before she got married to um, my brother-in-law. And so she met my brother-in-law. They got married and they have, a, they have now two ch- children, but they had one other one at the time. And she was the only one that had a different last name from the rest of the family. She had her dad's last name. And so she would always ask, why is my name different? And so th- the reason why they, he adopted her and they changed the name is so that she could be, feel like she's part of the family too. She's not the odd one. So it's a different th- reasons why you don't know why certain things happen, but I think most parents, especially a good mother, they want their child to feel safe, to feel accepted, and part of the family. So I, I do see why she changed the name. You know what I mean? I definitely yeah. do see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I also, too, I also think, too, that Eva needs to be uh, more mature about how she handles the situation. I think that she is going around bashing him. No, she doesn't. We, we, don't, we don't need her to do that. Mm-hmm. His record, his behavior has shown... She doesn't need to go on a publicity, uh, uh, you know, tour fashion him. I, I just think that, you know, leave space for her and her father to find some healing ground when she's old enough. Yeah. That is her father. You have to leave that space. I don't think you have to bash him to move on with your life. You have a whole new husband, a whole new family. Move on. Yeah. Yeah. She said that she's hopeful that maybe one day that, you know, they will have a relationship, but she doesn't see it right now. But anyway, wish them all the best. Um, the main, the biggest thing is that the child is well, it feels safe and feels secure, and you know, with her family. So, well, Miss Parker, it is your birthday week. Turn up, enjoy, <laughs> and uh, have a great hey, week. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> and Chicky, I'll see you in movie views. All right, yes sir. All right. right back up this week. Uh, we welcome Maya J. Pinson. She's the 15 year old motivational speaker and she wrote her first film uh, that she'll be going production later this uh, year right back after this I never felt like this before This life feels incredible Together we can do anything So eternal feels like infinity Baby, I run to the end of time Just to have you in my life I never, never, never let go Give me your hand, come grab a hold Let me touch you right to your soul do it together, make it last forever. Let's let it be for all eternity. Till the ends of the earth, I will follow you, girl. Love you forever, forever, forever. Till the ends of the Touch 
you right to your soul Let's do it together, make it last forever Let's let it be for all eternity Till the end of the earth I will find a good girl Brother, you forever You thought you'd ever need. I love you forever. I love you forever. Girl, I love you forever. forever. I promise I'll always be true. Cause can't nobody do it like you. I love you forever. Girl, I love you forever. My name in your mouth. I'll ask them to go to your house to kidnap and rape your spouse. Right out 
I'll feature. Cause I got more verses than preachers. Hey, they say I got a real big ego. Cause I get them bags of peso. In a plug, that's an amigo. We keep them bricks in the bando. Shoot a post it up with the Draco. Get it out the mud, show no. Try harder than snow on the blood. Bad boy, but ain't signed a plug. Bros always trying to mingle. Even though they know I ain't single. Cause they like I spit that lingo. And I'm packing like Mandingo. Beat it up cause I like it rough. Hoes wanna put me in handcuffs. Hi, I'm Tina Lifford. You know me as Aunt Bye on Queen Sugar and author of The Little Book of Big Lies. And I am listening to The Stephen Knight Show. Are you? Welcome back to The Stephen Knight Show. Our guest is a film executive producer, author, and motivational speaker who will, be, will start filming uh, her new project uh, she wrote entitled I'm Ready later this year. And she's only 15 years old. Please have a welcome the phenomenal Maya J. Welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Listen, I was reading your resume and wow, 15 years old, you've accomplished so much, <laughs> so much. So before we get into some of your projects and things you're working on, how did you get started? What is this desire to be, to get involved in all that you have going on? I started acting, well, I've been in magazines yeah. at the age of and I started taking my acting career seriously around the age of 11. Wow, wow, wow. I wrote my first book, I wrote my first book two years ago, and I'm writing, my first, I'm writing and producing my first short film this year. Yeah, and that's I'm Ready, is that correct? Yes, I'm oh, Ready. I'm Ready. So tell us about I'm Ready. I'm Ready is about a coming-to-age teen uh, who is starting not to be so uh, interested in books as maybe the, uh, <laughs> the uh, dating. Tell us about it. Yes. So the film is called I'm Ready. And it's, like you said, about a young teenager who's starting, you know, to become interested in dating. Right. And the film, the short film is centered around her conversation that she has with her mother about whether she's ready to date or not. Mm-hmm. So I'm using my film as a way to reach other teens and parents and to help encourage them to have more open communication and more trust between them yeah. on a lot of topics, especially dating. Most definitely, most definitely. And what what made you want to tackle this theme? Well, I noticed that a lot of kids, and teens and preteens actually, are starting to date at a much younger age. Yeah, yeah. Without, even with, with or without their parents' consent. Some mm-hmm. are sneaking out and... It's really dangerous. Yeah. Especially like, yeah, if someone were to sneak out and they, they're they put in harm's way, their parents wouldn't even know where to start looking for them. Exactly, exactly. And now with Uber and other ways to, you know, get around and even not using yeah. Uber, you know, um, we find even with older women or, or, or young women, um, they're being taken advantage of, you know, so it is important to have that, that security. And, um, this is also something for the parents because a lot of parents, when their daughters or even their sons get to that age of wanting to date, that's kind of like they're speaking a foreign language to them. Do you, do you think that this is one of your goals with this uh, to help parents, you know, see it from a teenager's uh, perspective? Yes. Um, I'm, I didn't write the film to necessarily, you know, condemn kids and say, oh, don't date. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I'm trying to reach like both aspects because I know the dating conversation can be an awkward conversation Mm -hmm. no matter like which side you're on the parent or the child right but trying to break the walls and break the barriers between and help you know build a better bond between kids and their parents 
Right, exactly. So everybody's on the same page. On the same yeah. page, yeah. So you, I, you have a t-shirt line, Communicate Before Dating. Tell us about that. Yeah, I just released my first t-shirt line called Conversating Before Dating. And you can purchase them on my website, mjaip.com. And it's to remind kids and parents to conversate before dating. So yeah. parents, we have parents buying it for themselves to remind mm-hmm. their kids to conversate before dating. And kids can wear it to remind their peers to conversate before dating. Most definitely, most definitely. So back to I'm Ready. I know you have a, a crown fund me campaign going on. Tell us about how the community and people invest interested in investing in this project, how they can be part of that. Yes, we need as much financial backing and financial support as we can get. So please donate. You can donate on Indiegogo, which is I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O dot com. And you can search up I'm Ready or you can search up my name, Maya J. Pinson. Or you can search, you can cash at me, which is Maya J. Pinson. We have 30 days to to raise a lot of money. Mm-hmm. We start filming. We start filming in March of 2020. Wow! 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 So, are you excited? I mean, is, I mean, you wrote it, and uh, it's a great message. And oh yeah, now it's coming together. I mean, what? How are you feeling right now? I know, obviously, I'm raising the money. Excited. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited because we also just recently got the word from. We applied to um, send my film through the SAG. Oh, yeah. We got the congratulations note about last week or two weeks ago. Wow. My film is going to be under the SAG direct position. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. So I know that you, you are a motivational speaker. We mentioned that earlier and on. What, what are the topics you like to take on? We obviously know in this film it's about dating and being transparent with your parents and, and, and parents being transparent with their, their kids. But what else topics do you discuss? I have a dream big speech. I have, yeah, I have various speeches. But I have, my main speeches that are my most popular speeches, most requested speeches, mm-hmm. are my dream big speech. Okay. I'm working on... In April, I'm going to travel to DeSoto, Texas to speak at the Everything Teen Expo. Oh, and wow. I'm going to be doing a conversation before dating speech there. Okay. And this is my first. Yeah, it's going to be the 3,000 kids. And this is my first time using this speech and this using this platform going this way. Wow. 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 So do you ever get nervous when you're out there? Or do you feel like you're a pro now? Because, I mean, you've won the award you've been recognized <laughs> is it, is it uh, does it come natural to you or what, what how do you prepare for your for your speeches um actually no it doesn't really bother me about how many people there are that's good because i just know i like to focus on the fact that i'm helping people and helping better them yeah and not, you know yeah how well, many people there are that makes a lot of sense. And I know you've inspired a lot of people just in the work you've done already. Who inspires you? My mom, most definitely. Oh, wow. Wow. And my dad. That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, what... they're really supportive. They keep me on track. I love them to death. Oh, that's awesome. And kudos to your parents because, I mean, to turn out the way you have, they did something right. They definitely did something right. <laughs> <laughs> what grade are you in now? I'm in the 10th grade. 10th grade, wow. How do your peers react to you, you know, and all the work that you're doing? How do they react to all that? I tend to keep it separate. Yeah. But my close, my close friends, they're really supportive, and they they also help encourage me. That's awesome. Who who Who's your team, you know, between the motivation, motivational speaking and the film projects and everything? Who, who, who helps you out? Who helps you manage all that? Is it your parents? My PR and I I work through the company shooting future stars. Okay. My okay. PR team and my mom also helps. Awesome, awesome. And so you are you from DC? Yes. I'm from DC. How how did growing up in DC? How do you think uh, those influences um, outside of your parents contribute to the the young lady you have grown up to be? The DC community is really supportive. They always they 
hope spreads the word. Like when kids are out here doing, you know, positive things, they yeah. really make sure that they spread the word about that. And I love that. Yeah, yeah, I love DC. My mom's from DC. I'm from Virginia, but um, yeah, I always love DC and just the culture and everything. So what are I'm, you in Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta now. I've been here for a while, but I'm I was born and raised in Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Is so, there any events in Atlanta? I would love to partner with you and join. Most definitely, most definitely. We'll, I'll have to keep your information and keep you posted because there, there's always something going. On. That's beauty, like DC and Atlanta. There's always something going on, and you know your message and what you represent. I think that's something that we need to see more than what some of the things we're seeing on social media and you know on TV. And so definitely, we'll definitely keep in touch and and partner. I would love that. So for everyone listening out yeah. to listen out tonight, what do you want them to know about Maya J? What is what's you want their takeaway to be? Personality wise or business wise? Business wise. We'll say business wise. Okay. Well, I love acting. Acting is my passion and I love writing. I've written a more a children's book, inspirational book for children. Mm-hmm. I'm a motivational speaker. I write all of my speeches from scratch. I writ, wrote my short film, so I love acting and writing. Yeah, and I balance my heavy schedule through my method of stop, drop, work, and then play. And that's actually what my um, book is about. No, oh, yeah, tell us about I that. I read that. Tell us about that. Tell us about this uh, stop, drop, work, and play. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so stop, drop, work, and play is basically my method of how I balance my heavy schedule. Yeah. And I also maintain a four point O GPA mm. with, you know, all my extracurricular activities. Awesome. I play softball and basketball. Yeah. So stop, drop, work, and play is my method that reminds me to prioritize my work over my playing time, my leisure time. Mm-hmm. So I and I noticed that that was a really good message. Yeah. So, and it's better to start kids off young. Exactly. Positive thinking. Exactly. So I wrote the children's book, Backpack Lily, to teach kids how to stop, drop, work, and play. To how to prioritize their studying time over their playing time. That's perfect. That's awesome. And so I know that we have I'm Ready, and people can uh, uh, donate to your crowdfunding. We'll add a link on our website. Uh where do you see yourself in five years? I know you're still you're still in high school and you're sophomore. It's awesome. Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do you want to? Where do you want your career to go? Do you think? In five years, I see myself in college mm-hmm. and on the big screen. Okay, love it, <laughs> love it, love it. Well, Maya J, I want to thank you so much for taking time out your busy schedule. I mean, you are a busy young lady, very busy. I wish you all the success with I'm Ready. Tell everyone again where they can donate, where they can find out more information, and just keep up with everything you have going on. You can donate on, on Indiegogo, I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O.com, and you can search up I'm Ready or my name, or you can cash at me which is Maya Pinson, M-A-Y-A-P-I-N-S-O-N. Awesome. And you can follow me on Instagram at MayaJ04. All right. Maya J, thank you so much for taking time out your schedule. Thanks so much for having me. And for more information, go to our website for the links to her, uh, her work and what she has going on. And we'll be right back after this. You didn't know. You didn't know. me. Trips out. It's all on me. That's a quarter million. She don't like the list.
Listen, baby, so resilient. But she know I'm cunning. She know that I'm brilliant. My baby roll a honey, but that's just some lush. I spend that on backwards. I spend that on lush. A honey did your heart like, boy, you know that's real. Beat that monkey up good. Shout it out loud, talk it to shout it. I ain't just talking, I'm an overdrive when we talk it. That's my liberal city, bitch. I've been by getting it, man. She more when I pick up on her. Let me throw that in the really on her. That's my women's when I phone her. So she gon' fill her when I'm on her. Got my own bag of tell you. Cut the cup on my body to pop me. Barely you need. This Louis all up on me. We lip from 7 to 3 a.m. You know I'm dipping hot sauce all on the 2 the a.m. But I jump in that whip here, tell that bitch. Bro, rubber, cause the really don't give a shit. Moonwalking all in this, my bitch grand and I'm on my wrist. This cold with a little bit of hit.
Hey, what's up, y'all? It's the First Lady Faith Evans, and you're listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Our guest tonight, many refer to her as the Queen of Underground Soul, recently released a video for her new single, Camelot, which appears on her latest album, Sometimes a Rose Will Grow in Concrete. Please help me welcome the very talented Cy Smith. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I know you're you're busy. You're promoting uh, the single, and you you're doing your doing your thing. So I thank you for taking time out your schedule. Definitely. Oh man, of course, there's no problem, man. <laughs> so tell us kind of how you got your start. I mean, you've been doing this, and I was reading over everything. You've accomplished so much. How did you get started in the music industry? I got started. Let me see. I think the long story short is after I finished. School at Howard University. Yeah. I moved to Los H-U. Angeles. H <laughs> U, you, yeah. you know? I, I moved to Los Angeles and um, I had a couple, I had a friend who also went to Howard with me and he was the band director for Kenny Lattimore. Okay. And he yeah. was like, hey, do you want to come on the road with Kenny Lattimore? And I was like, heck yeah. Right. And that was my first, yeah, that was my first professional gig. And then after Kenny, uh, I auditioned. Um, sort of spontaneously, I wasn't planning on auditioning, but I, I auditioned for Ricky Minor, who was putting together mm-hmm. the singers for Whitney Houston. Yes, and I got that gig. And um, you know, just one thing: after you do something like Whitney Houston, kind of the world is yours. You know, yeah. So I, just, I just ended up, yeah, kind of snowballing into so many different things, and especially with Ricky Minor, who kind of took me along for almost everything he did. I know? saw that, yeah, that you all kept that relationship. Uh... Kept it going. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So how was it working with um, Whitney? How was how was that experience? It was amazing. Um, I mean, I learned a lot, of course, from from you know the voice herself. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I, I, but I also learned a lot just just from the people in the band. I mean, yeah. like, her band was. Yeah, it was a cast of all stars. So like mm-hmm. growing up reading names in the albums like Paul Jackson Jr. and Terry yeah. Johnson uh-huh. and then ending up in a band with all of them. That's crazy, was, right? Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Kirk Whalem on saxophone. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that stuff. So I just really learned a lot from the organization. Um and I and I was really close and remained close with so many of those guys and, and, and even, you know, like Robin Crawford, you know. Yeah. I I stayed close with all of them because they really kinda watched me grow up. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was it was an amazing experience, really. Let me ask you yeah. a question, just because you mentioned Robert. Uh, you know, she came out with the, the tell all book about her relationship with Whitney and a lot of people felt like mm-hmm. uh maybe that was inappropriate, but she's felt like it was her story to tell. Uh what are your thoughts on that? Do you have an opinion about that? Yeah, I mean I Robin is such a sincere and and beautiful person mm-hmm. and and I know that I know that she always had Whitney's first interest at heart. Okay. You know, she always yeah. had her best best interest at heart. So I believe, you know, if if she had a story to tell and, and believed it was her story to tell, then it then it was. You yeah. Know, it's really yeah. as simple as that. I you know, that. and I support I support all of that. Yeah. Most definitely. So then you come out yeah. with your own album. Your own album, yes. And what what made you decide? Okay, now it's my turn to get in front of the in front of the mic, you know, and and do my thing. You know, I ran from it for a long time. I I really wanted to just come out here and be a songwriter. Okay, and it seemed like all the songs, yeah, all the songs that I you know demoed, wrote, and then demoed. People thought the demo was like a recording artist demo, <laughs> right, not a songwriter yeah. demo. Uh-huh. And a lot for a long time, I was running away from you know people saying just you know you should have a record deal. And I finally just, you know, signed a deal just to get my songs out. Right, yeah. And it ended up not being the best deal. And, you know, that company never released my album. Mm. But I really caught the artist bug. And I realized all the time, like this whole time I've been an artist and I didn't know it. Yeah, yeah. Um, So, yeah, so this album, and, and kudos to you for, like, saying it's a mouthful for saying the whole thing without flubbing the title. <laughs> I went over it a few times, don't I? <laughs> but no, but I love I love what the title. I love that title. A rose Thank will you. grow in the concrete. You know what I mean? Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, and and so this is my fifth album and yes. it, but it's the first time that I've written and produced the whole album. I've oh done, wow. You know? wow. So wow. I'm really uh, yeah, I'm really proud of that effort and just sort of 
taking my artistry to to the next um i think next level you yeah know, um pro- progressively um it it it's really a chance this album especially was really a chance for me to tell my story from all angles not exactly just from lyrics and melody you know yeah. letting people know where i come from musically as well most yeah. most definitely, and so this album came out in was it twenty eighteen when the album this album That's came right. out? Yeah. okay, so you writ, wrote produced it all, you know, which as yeah. a songwriter, I understand when I find re- recorded and did everything for my first song myself as opposed to uh-huh. singing someone else's song, I just know how more important it was to me and how or how sacred it was to me, so did you have that yeah. same kind of feeling when you were releasing this project? Yes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and that same with that feeling also comes, you know, the, the, the sort of fear and yeah, yeah, like yeah. I don't know how people are gonna receive this. Exactly. And, and, you, and it's very personal. It's a very personal thing to do, write a song and Absolutely. and let people hear your your truth and your story. So I was I was definitely nervous but um it was received really well and Most it definitely. continues to be and, that's why in 2020 I can still release exactly you know singles. That's a good album. You know, uh huh. Yeah, thank yeah, you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and so I'm I'm really excited to be able to still work this record um, even as I begin my next project. Most know? definitely. So Camelot, yeah. I I, kind of, I love the uh, the you know what, how you explain it. Obviously, thank it's talking you. about falling in love, but it's not necessarily falling in love with a person, but a place. Can you talk about that? Yeah, okay, so the video just came out, um, mm-hmm. and I'm really excited about it. My husband directed it, shot, directed, and edited it. Um, and awesome job. And we shot job. the video in Tanzania. Thank you. We shot it in East Africa, um, in Tanzania. Uh-huh. Um, and, and I was saying to him, you know, it, it would be awesome if we could, or it would be interesting if we could, if you could shoot it so that the love interest is the place that we're in. Okay. Instead of having instead of having a man, you know, play opposite of me, mm-hmm. you know, let, let the viewer fall in love with where we are right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and sort of let's, let's play around with the reimagining Camelot as a destination, you know, reimagining it uh, instead of being like a medieval castle. Somewhere exactly. In Great mm-hmm. Britain, like being this place right here in Africa, like an actual place that exists mm-hmm. instead of a fictitious place that we read about in fairy tales. You know, and um, and that was that was the idea behind it. And he really captured the the scenery and and where we were, like in Zanzibar and on the Indian Ocean and up in Arusha with the safaris and uh-huh. you can see all the animals. And it's, it's just really glorious. But that's how it really was. You know, wow. yeah. that's how it really felt there. You know, and and you shot and he shot it on his iPhone ten. Which is yes. crazy. You're seeing a lot of stars and shoot music videos on their iPhones. Talk about exactly. how that technology, how has that changed the game? Man, you know, it, it's definitely changed the game in terms of just luggage weight. Because yeah. I remember yep. we shot a video back in 2009 mm-hmm. in Italy. And, and he shot it on um, 16 millimeter. And that was, you know, half of our luggage was film. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, and the camera. Um, but this time, you know, all he had was, were a couple of lenses. And, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and that iPhone would fit in his back pocket. And right. Like, okay. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, we could shoot anywhere. Uh huh. So it really makes it, um, it really makes it sort of, available for almost anybody who has a an eye right and a dream yeah exactly to make to make something beautiful and i think that's dope it know? is dope it is dope i have a friend who's a he's a very talented photographer and uh you know he takes his equipment everywhere but sometimes he'll just pull out his, his iphone and take amazing pictures you know and so it's interesting yeah. that although he's invested all this money into this equipment that iphone still sometimes takes some of his best you know his best photos. So I think his best work. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's a, it's amazing that that type of accessibility is so available to so many people because you see, you see kids all over places in in mm-hmm. Africa, for instance. Yep. You know who were showing us different things on the phone while yeah. we were there. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. like. They were like, "No, you need to find your light." You know? Exactly right. <laughs> and, and, and that's such a beautiful thing because it means we're really going to see lots of 
beautiful work coming from places that we haven't seen exactly. and voices that we haven't heard. Very that's, true. And that's a good thing. Very yeah. true. So I know you're wrapping yeah. up the uh, Camelot promotional tour. How's that going so far? It's going good. I played Chicago, Charlotte, Nashville, L.A., and San Francisco. And coming up, I have uh, Austin and Houston. Yes. Um, yeah, March 5th uh, in Austin and March 8th in Houston. And um, it's been a really good reception. I'm That's saying, awesome. I can't, I can't tell people how beautiful it is to be able to do this as an independent artist, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, when I say independent, I mean, right after the show, right. you catch me coming back out on stage, breaking down my gear. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> Listen, yeah, that's and, the grind. Um, yeah. We, you know, that's the grind. When yep. we went to San Francisco, I did most of the driving, you know, like mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. But I love it because, you know, you come out on stage and, and you see the people there and they're there for you and it, and it just makes the whole grind worth it yeah it and does all of it, you, know, you know they all came to yeah. see you exactly exactly yeah and it's, and it's good it's a good feeling and so then you you recently completed an 18 show 14 city tour of russia how was that yes i mean yes. wow or, 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 or shall i shall i say da <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing steven i was in russia for one month wow and like you said i did 14 cities and 18 shows it was a grind because yeah. i had i had a different band in almost every city oh okay and so yeah. i had to fly to each city and rehearse with the band and mm-hmm. play the show you know but the audiences in russia were beautiful and i'm mean, really these were these. I went to places that most Russians don't go to. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. I was in the heart of Siberia, like Sia Smith in Siberia. Mm, in wow! Wow! Well, right. Oh my God! But it was amazing. Um, the people were beautiful. The they got to hear. You know, to them it was like the closest they might come to hearing or seeing somebody who played with Whitney Houston. Exactly. Or, yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. So they were just excited to be that close. You know. To somebody who was actually, you know, in that entourage, or uh, I don't know if entourage is the right word, but you know what I mean? In yeah, that circle. exactly. You know, and that's huge. That really it's huge, yeah. Really yeah, it was really good. So I, I was... It was really good. I love John Legend's, uh, his Christmas album, Legendary Christmas, but, um, and which you, I didn't realize you were a vocal ranger and background vocalist on, but you came up with your own holiday album, Christmas in Cy- Cyberspace. Yeah, I wish I would have known. It's my favorite time of year. I'm rocking all the Christmas music. I will be listening this year. <laughs> Tell us about that project. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's never too late. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not. That's the, that's the, that's the beauty that's of the exactly. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Every year when that when that time comes around, right after Thanksgiving, you could put Christmas and Cyber Space right. Yeah, on. exactly. Um, I I got an email from a, a young producer in Nashville. This was like maybe three years ago or two mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah. And he was like, hey, I'd love to produce something on you. And at the time, I was working on my own album. Okay. So I was like, you know, my head isn't really there right now, young brother. You know, let me get at you after I finish this record. Right. So, he, so I, I, in fact, I said, you know, get at me, you know, in mm-hmm. a year, mm-hmm. you know. And so he did. He got at me a year later and was like, hey, this is, um, this is it's me again, you know, like, um, do you want, let me do something on you? And so I was like, all right. And so he had an idea for um, Christmas time is here. You know the Charlie Charlie Brown love song? song, yeah. Christmas time is uh-huh. here. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. All the children call. Yeah. So he mm-hmm. had an idea for that, and he sent me the track, and I was like, ooh, I like where this is going. <laughs> all right. And so I record. I you know I I put in my two cents because. He was still, you know, he was he's a young kid, so he, I, I, I kind of needed to help him edit. You right, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Um, but, but then I, I did that, and then I came at him and said, we should do My Favorite Things. Mm. Now, he had never even heard My Favorite what? Things. No. <laughs> right. What? No. What? He had never even heard it. So I sent him a couple of different versions, like Diana Ross and, of course, The Sound of Music and all yeah, that. Yeah. And I was like, Check out how we can sort of reimagine it. Right. And and he came back at me with a track. His name is Isaac Richardson, by the way. Okay. He came back at me with, yeah, Bam Rich. He came back at me with a track for My Favorite Things, and then we freaked it, and it was dope. And I was wow. like, yes. 
I was really excited. And then just to round out the EP, I did um, Little Drummer Boy. Mm. And this time, I think I played most of it and sent my little sketch to him and okay. let him do the drum for it because he's a drummer. Okay. And that's okay. how that's how we freaked that. And wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, you you, you think... You sang some of my favorites. I got to check this out. I definitely got to check that out for sure. For sure. Okay. Well, okay. When you check it out, Stephen, let me know what you think. Okay. I, I certainly will. I certainly will. Okay. All so, right. so I mean, when you look back, yeah, I was reading, you know, reading through your resume. You've accomplished so much uh, over your, you know, over your career. Do, do you pinch yourself sometimes and like, wow, I really did this. I did all that. And I know there's a lot more that you oh. have. You have to give us, but when you look back, I know sometimes it's, you don't always look back because you're looking forward. But do you ever look back and yeah. just are amazed by what you've been able to accomplish so far? Absolutely, yeah. all, all the time. Yeah. And if I ever catch myself feeling down or feeling mm-hmm. like I'm approaching some type of jaded mentality, I, I absolutely look back and yeah. think to myself because yeah. because I I remember moving out here and a lot of the people that you know, we're here when I first got here, aren't here anymore, yeah, you know, it's true. for whatever reason, either they, either they left the business or, mm-hmm. you know, the town, the town was too much for them or yeah. the business was too much for them and some people died, you know right. what I mean? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I pinch myself all the time because I know that this life is, is, is a life that a lot of people would kill for. And I'm just really happy and blessed that, that not only have I had success in music, but I've had some really beautiful friendships that yeah, I Yeah, that's awesome. Share, yeah, you know? yeah. And that part, you can't put a price on, you know? And everyone t- talks about how difficult the music industry can be and how kind of cutthroat. Um, wh- has you, how has your experience been overall? Have you, has it, have you experienced some of that or ha- have you been able to find longevity and, and continue the way, how, how you have? <laughs> I have absolutely experienced some of that cutthroatness yeah. and yeah. some of that, you know, those bad experiences. But I think the the reason I've been able to stay in it so long is because I never abandoned who I am. Yeah, that's important. You know? Yep. I never abandoned that and and that that little girl and that and that young woman. Um, I always believed in her. You yeah. Know? I never stopped. Yeah. Even when you know, other people tried to get me to not believe it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and I and I always felt like no matter what, I I have a story to tell, and, Most and definitely. somebody's gonna resonate with that. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so you know, just just keeping the faith, you know, no matter what is is the way I've stayed in it, and and that's the way I think anybody who's in this for a long time stays in it. Most definitely. Know? Most definitely. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes a rose will still grow in concrete is available on all platforms. We're on uh, Camelot. New video out. Everyone check it out. Everyone download the single. What's next for uh, for Cy Smith? Well, yeah. Sometimes a rose will grow in concrete is out, and then I also released a remix project called Sometimes a Rose Will Get a Remix. Oh, so a remix okay. Project. Yes. Yeah. And that's also available on all platforms and. There are acapellas on the remix album in case, you know, I love acapellas. Or oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just want to play around with acapellas. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those are everywhere. Um, what's next for me is I'm I'm still touring with trumpeter Chris Bodie. Yes. So I'm leaving, yes. I'm leaving with him tomorrow to play in um, like three shows in California, and then we go to Tokyo oh, on nice. Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, we go to Tokyo, and then we come back, and then I do the rest of my Camelot tour, and you know that I, you know, I can't even think past March. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. Don't, <laughs> that takes me into March. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> don't give me don't don't give me too much. Right? I know how you feel. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you de- you're definitely doing big things, and I'm I'm just grateful that you took time out your schedule to join us tonight. Again. Oh, thank you. I, I have to say it because I love. I just love the title of this album. Sometimes the rose will still will grow in concrete. Sometimes the rose will grow in concrete <laughs> because if you think about the significance of that, I mean, wow. Yeah. And then what's the title? What's the title of the remix um, album? Sometimes the rose will get a remix. We'll get a remix, okay. And the yeah. single Camelot yeah. is out now with the video. Tell everyone where they can keep up with you and keep up with your busy schedule and your beautiful music and everything you have going on. Oh man, everybody can keep up with me um, on Instagram at Cyberspace. 
S Y B E R S P A C E. And I'm also on Twitter, talking shit, uh, talking stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> at, I'm at Cyberspace on Twitter, and then Facebook.com slash Sidesmith Music, and of course my website is Sidesmith.com. All right. All right, thanks a lot to Sidesmith for joining us tonight. Everyone go watch the um, video uh, Concrete and download the music. And uh, for more information, yeah. you can also go to our website, the Stephen Show.com. We'll be right back after this.
music machine. Lyrics. Uh huh. Oh, oh, this that yeah. thing right here, K. Yeah, boy. Word. Look. Do your thing. Do your thing. Look. The product of thousand tenements. Try, try blending with the innocent. Yeah. It's to the moon like we chasing stars, drinks in the air, my we about to raise the yeah. bar. Hot Valerian can speak it, then can eat with us. The Wayne Martin, these this is just some seat fillers. Teach, level up, they'll see the growth. Cryptocurrency, bitcoins, to who need the most. Yeah. Look, was quick to one squeeze the toast. These days, about my bread, so I see a loaf. Greedy, couple plates, we gon' eat the most. Point game, if we trail, at least we keep it close. Yeah. Yeah. Take a toast, sip it in moderation. Huh. It was written in a proclamation, my obligation to the fairest to will. Give food for thought till they cherish the meal, swerve it and pill. Chicks, notice the squad. I ain't talking foreign exchange when I study abroad. Know the facade. Got a stunching up and out of guard. Talking about portfolios and profit yeah. margins. Yeah. We done finally reached the pinnacle. Yeah. Without compromising the principles. Life good, overseas, different interviews. Back then, you to do it for the family. We done finally oh, reached the pinnacle. Oh, yeah. Without compromising okay. the principles yeah. Life good, overseas, different Listen. interviews Back then, used to do it for the minimum Deep slumber, sleep till we see numbers yeah. In the vision, seen it like Steve Wonder Each summer, hit a monetary apex Lifestyle's much more than having safe sex Strategic yeah. talk, dudes who don't pay chess That's starving, only getting a taste test Put the sores, finish wines and poured it Learn the game from ballers that stay scoreless yeah. Rap my we paint portraits yeah. Spitting riddles like we socially awkward Pyrex jaws to the corporate office Catapulted movements was flawless <laughs> We about to take a sabbatical yeah. Got the brand, the crown's just collateral yeah. We patrolling different avenues Life's a bitch, used to want to marry you Look, it's kind of hard to think practical, practical. Think it's simple to new rational Lack of aptitude, now me down to Georgia Shore Authoritative, if you spill it, then it's where we love Coded language, shit you never heard before Verbal onslaught, like, what do you want to hurt me for? Yeah. Dig, I'm a lyrical enthusiast Mumble rap, meet these nicks with a crucifix We used to listen with exuberance yeah. Think they bars coming from a lack of tutelage so in jabs like a pugilist, not the best. I suggest you go review your list. We don't finally reach the pinnacle uh -huh. yeah. without compromising the principles. Mm -hmm. Life good, overseas, different interviews. Back then, used to do it for the family. Mm -hmm. We don't finally uh -huh. reach the pinnacle uh -huh. yeah. without compromising the principles. Uh -huh. Life good, overseas, different interviews. Yeah. Back then, used to do it for the family. We're family. finally here. Yeah. We're finally here. Talk to him, I said we're finally yeah. here. Yeah. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Adam, how's it going? It's going well, Stephen. How are you? Cannot complain. Cannot complain. How was your weekend? It was good. The weather was not as warm as it could have been, but uh, it was sunny all weekend, which I know you guys have rain down in Atlanta right now or had rain, so mm -hmm. we've been kind of enjoying the sunshine for now, but clouds are coming up here, so okay, yeah. uh, but it was a good weekend. Good. Always good to hear that. Well, we'll let you and Chica take it away with movie reviews. All right, well, I'll kick it off. So I saw two films this weekend, one new and one old. And the one I saw that was new is called Seaberg. And this is an Amazon movie, uh, Amazon uh, Studios movie, following the actress uh, Jean Seaberg and the FBI's Co Intel Pro investigation of her and other members of 
different movements. And I'll get a little bit into that, but this follows her story of how she was doing movies and she became more involved with the Black Panther movement and other civil rights movements. And along the process, the FBI decided to investigate her and start a program that would bug all of her phones and see what her involvement with these organizations are and the people within them, and also a plan to discredit her and ruin her reputation, which, again, was part of the whole FBI surveillance program at the time. It stars Kristen Stewart as Gene Seberg, and it's actually got a good cast of actors. Anthony Mackey uh, plays Hakeem Jamal, the member of Black Panthers that she was involved with, and he's most famous, at least for me, for being in the Captain America movies and, of course, the Marvel Universe. But we also have Ben Svahn as a character, Zazie Beaks, uh, Stephen Root, and a few others. So overall, it's it's an interesting movie. I think Kristen Stewart, actually, I think all the cast did a good job in it. It was a little bit kind of a light touch. You didn't really get into more of the investigations or more of how they really dug deep into her and trying to discredit her. Um, you know, one of the things they did was try to convince the public by leaking to the press that she had a baby with Hakeem Jamal and she was pregnant at the time, but it wasn't, he wasn't the father, but they used that to try to ruin her reputation and his reputation at the same time. Um, overall, i I think uh, since it's an Amazon Studios production, we'll probably see it on streaming soon enough. Uh, but it's it's kind of an interesting, again, to see a little bit of the FBI's involvement in things like this in the 60s and the 70s. The other film I saw was actually the film that made Jane Seberg, or Jean Seberg internationally renowned, and that was Breathless. And this is a 1960 film from a French director, Jean-Luc Godard. And it's one of those movies that I think if you're a cinephile, you should definitely watch or you know about it. Anyone who's kind of listened to the history of film or have done anything with that. This was a movie that was a big part of the French New Wave. And this was kind of a movement that French directors were doing in the sense that they introduced a lot of looking at the camera sometimes and having a storyline that wasn't really based on anything, uh, but just kind of the, the life of people. And this film followed this criminal that's kind of wandering around and he will steal cars in Paris and his life and his love interest played by Jean Seberg. And she does a great job on the camera. It is a black and white film, but I thought it was very interesting to kind of, because I don't know much about Jean Seberg, uh, you know, I wanted to go see this movie, so I decided to do a little research, and it's interesting to see the real-life actress in a movie that I've never even seen before. So definitely, I'll say this one is for the fans of uh, film and cinema, and if you're looking for something different, this one I saw on Canopy, which is, again, the library's free streaming service. Uh, so I encourage you to check that out if you're looking for something a little different. And those were it. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so I saw um, The Invisible Man, uh, which stars Elizabeth Moss. You know her from The Handmaid's Tale. Um, Oliver Jackson, Aldous Hodge, and Storm Reed. So this movie basically is uh, revamped, and it basically plays out like the trailer. It is, in essence, a stalker film. But I'm here to tell you that it's so good. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be that good I, I, because I've already kind of guessed the premise. Um, but it really it, – it surprised me how dark it was. And if you're thinking about the old Invisible Man, it's not like that. It's, it's darker. Um, I, I think in the last show I referenced it, referenced it to uh, – the show you on mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, and I said it, it was you if the guy was um, invisible. That's kind of pretty much what it is. Um, oh wow! Okay. Yeah, 
it it yeah it's it's pretty dark and um I don't know. I'm thinking that every time that they come out with an Invisible Man movie, they they should now make them different. This was this was interesting. I, and I remember the old black and white Invisible Man was more of a love story. This is not that. Um, looks like they had fans. Um, this movie had a nine million dollar budget. They've made twenty nine million uh, domestically on the weekend. And worldwide, they made $49.2 million. So fans are loving it. I suggest going to go see it. It's a good um, date night out. It's a good movie. I think you should check it out. And you can check it out, uh, whether in matinee or out of matinee. It's that good to me. I, I recommend it. Was it, uh, is it as scary, or is it more of kind of you know that he's like, you know the threat's there, and you just you feel the intensity? Well, I mean, it is the Invisible Man. You know the threat's there. You just don't know <laughs> when. When's going to happen? <laughs> okay, and, nice. And what, and what makes it so so awesome is you'll replay the movie in your mind and you'll think about certain scenes, and you'll be like, wait a minute, was he there then when this happened? He could be in any scene. You just don't know if he's in the scene because you can't see. Yeah, I feel like I, if I was a oh, Elizabeth yeah. Moss, I would have run around with a uh, spray bottle of paint or something so I could just spray <laughs> all, every room I'm in to see if I could find them. Well, it, it, I'll just say this. It took her a minute to catch on. It, it took her a second <laughs> okay. to catch on. Uh, but I will say this. She did an awesome job of being terrified with nothing in the room with her. Right. The fight scene is amazing. I love it. I love it. There's there's a few fight scenes, but, and you just have to give credit to the actors because it's an invisible man. There's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so definitely check it out. I thought it was really good. Um, and Maya J uh, actually hit me up, and she told me she enjoyed it too. So awesome. Thanks, Maya J, for the thumbs up. Yeah. Um, so TV wise. Uh, I'm still watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, which Larry David is insanely crazy. Um, he makes me laugh out loud, and if you are into his brain of comedy, or you like his writing, or you are, you have been a fan of Seinfeld, you know, that same tradition is in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, it just seems like every week he gets more and more insane. Um, the Outsider, I'm still watching that, which is one more episode next week, so they're about to round it up. This last episode, if anyone's out there watching it, please hit me up on social media. That was a doozy. They left us, you know, on a cliffhanger until next week, a major cliffhanger until next week. Um, Talk to me. Let's talk about it. Um, Lock and Key uh, started watching on Netflix. Um, The Hunters, I'm almost done on Netflix. I mean, on yeah, that's on – no, that's on Amazon. I'm sorry. I'm almost Mm -hmm. done that one. That's the show with Al Pacino. And I've started watching Stephen They've Gotta Have Us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow. It, yep. it surprised me. It surprised me because I didn't know it was really about film. I thought it was just about uh, African-American entertainers. Yeah. Period. But mm-hmm. it's more so about the film industry and African-Americans in the film industry. So it's film specific. You know I love that. Yeah, um, yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're into film and you're into black history... The two converge. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. Definitely something that you would enjoy. And, um, yeah. And hooray to uh, all the streaming services out there for so much content. Oh, I yeah. I think that we would ever be at this place where there is just too much to absorb. Mm-hmm. Too much going mm-hmm. on. Yeah. I'm overload right now. Yep. I have a friend always trying to suggest stuff for me to watch, and I'm like, Listen, I have too much stuff I'm already watching right now. <laughs> so much I'm watching. I can't watch nothing else. <laughs> but um, no, it's really great. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, guess what I've been watching a lot lately. I don't know why. I didn't I had seen it before, but I never really watched catfish like that. But I've been obsessed with catfish. And so I've been watching it. And I'm thinking these people are crazy. You haven't talked to somebody in five years. You've been communicating with this person online. Never talked to them on the phone. Never video cam. And you don't. And you don't think this. You think this person's a real person? <laughs> I, just, I, don't know. 
But uh, I've been watching Sometimes it. the mind wants to believe. Yeah. And I feel so bad because a lot of times it's really someone who had been picked on or teased and, you know, they had to make this alter ego just to get someone to chat with them. And the reason why they didn't meet because yeah. they, they knew that if you saw what I really looked like, you wouldn't be interested. It's sad. That's the part sad. That's the part sad. Yeah. But you keep watching, don't you? Sure do. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> but yeah. Anything coming down the pipeline or anything else? Uh, so I think the new Pixar movie looks fun onward. It's about these, uh, these, I guess, two kids that are trying to... It's it's a fantasy world where magic and dragons still exist, but technology became so much easier to use that people stopped using magic. And mm. so these two brothers are like trying to see if magic is still there. And so I mean, it's a Pixar movie. It looks fun. Um, the only other one, which is kind of a weird one, but it's, of course, an A24 film, so most of those are out there is called first cow and this one is about a cook that's traveling west uh, with some fur trappers in oregon so it's like a uh, probably in the 1800s uh and he meets uh a chinese immigrant who is bringing a cow out west because he wants to bring the first cow out to this area and they create a restaurant and become popular so again it seems like a weird one but a24 usually has good movies so yes they do so I have to backtrack because there's an independent movie that I meant to see when I saw uh, Goldie, and it's uh, called Premature. So I have to backtrack and catch that um, before they take it out of the theater. Um, the thing about those independent films, if they're in the theater and if they don't generate enough money, they snatch them off really quickly. So I need to run and see that before... Um, they do that to that film. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard good things about it. I just want to see for myself so I can tell you guys about it. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, as always, thank you for letting us know to spend our money on and our time and what not to. And uh, have a great week. All right. Thanks yeah. a lot. All right. Right back after this.
hard like this all day It feels so good when we shaking, day. When you curl your toes and you grab my hand This is the sound when we making man Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Uh, for Janera, birthday week, anything planned? Yes. It is. Um, as usual, no. And my friends always get on me for this. I did not have I do not have anything planned. <laughs> so if um probably like to relax. So if Robbie has something to plan, great. If he doesn't, <laughs> also well no, if you don't have anything planned then we're gonna have some problems. It'll be a problem, but, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, we, we will have problems. We will have problems. But nothing big. I don't have anything planned. Big. Okay. Well, I hope you have a yeah. great one, either way. Yes, thank you, thank you. Most definitely. I know you have some great things for us, I'll let you go ahead and take it away. I do, I do. Um, I have a lot of great things for everybody since it's been so long since I have been able to share. Yeah. So, um, yes, and I hate not being able to do it like I like. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll just go ahead and get started with Gap. Um, if you shop there, you can get up to 50% off of select items, um, plus you can get an extra 30% off of your purchase. Um, and there is no code. You just have to go online, and it's going to be like select items. Um, if you're shopping online, uh, you have to use. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a code if you're shopping online. It's, it's code shop, but um, that is though that will be on select items as well. Uh, Victoria's Secret is having a sale on their satin separates, and this is their pajamas. If you shop there, you can buy one get one free on all of their satin separates. So if anybody's looking to buy me a gift. <laughs> That's what you guys can do. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Um, Cars is also having a sale on all of their spring styles. So this is for the kids. Of course, I have to sprinkle something in for the kids every now and again. Mm -hmm. um, so if you shop there, you can get up to 50% off of select spring styles. Uh, Target is having a sale. And if you shop there now, you can get free shipping on all orders of $35 or more. Plus, you can get up to 20% off of select beds, bedding, baths, rugs, and window treatment items. Today is the last day to shop Bloomingdale's and save up to 5%, I'm sorry, 25% um, on your purchase. Uh, True Religion is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get up to 30% off, I'm sorry, you can get an extra 30% off of all of their markdowns. Uh, you just have to use code 30 at checkout if you're shopping online. Old Navy is having a sale on all of their jeans, sweatshirts, and hoodies. Um, and if you shop there now, you can get 50% uh, up to 50% off of those of select items. Today is the last day to shop Neiman Marcus Last Call and get up to 65% off of Eileen Fisher and Lafayette 148 New York items. Plus, you can get an extra 25% off of everything else, including those items. Uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, not the outlet, but the actual Saks Fifth. Um, it's having a sale on select dresses where you can save up to 25%. Uh, today is the last day to shop J. Crew's leap year sale. Um, Cause if every, for everybody who didn't realize or didn't know, this is a leap year. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, February 29th on Saturday. So they're still having their leap year sale. And if you shop there now, you can get 29% uh, off of everything in their store and online. And if you're shopping online, you need to use code FEB29 at checkout. And last but not least, um, to, uh, 
if you shop at uh, Shutterfly.com, you can get 40% off of everything on their site. Nice, nice. And they can find all that at GenGenuinely.com, correct? They surely can. They surely can. Well, thanks again, and hope you have a wonderful birthday week. Thank you. I need to take some time off, but I'm not going to do it. (laughs) Yes, you do. (laughs) Well, Well, happy birthday, then. We'll be right back after this. Never showed you when he's tempted. Yeah. Mm. I was a blind, I didn't know. I gave you my heart, you got it, my soul. I just be fine with being a hoe. Yeah. Every time I turn around, you say I be doing too much. But when I stop doing too much, say that I'm not doing enough. Every time I turn around. Say I be doing too much, but when I stop doing too much, say that I'm not doing enough. So I'm not doing enough. I'ma need some examples. Cause I see you riding around town trying these hoes like a sample. Shine around just a scandal. People told me you a handful, but you know me, I'm stubborn. I can never love another. I was a blind, I didn't know I gave you my heart, you got in my soul I won't go through this shit no more Every time I turn around You say I be doing too much But when I stop doing too much Well, that's our show. I want to thank our special guests, Maya J. Pinson and Cy Smith, for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great week. A special birthday shout-out to our very own Miss Parker and Janera. Hope you all have a great birthday weeks and year. And uh, we'll talk again next Monday. Peace and good night. Yeah.